Hello and welcome to my channel once again. This time the video as you guys know is about the popular plant Kabamba. But before we start this comprehensive guide do make sure to support me by clicking that subscribe button and sharing the video. Kabamba plant is becoming a popular freshwater aquarium plant for hobbyists. Kabamba plants are almost always available in stores, and may also be sold under the names Green Kabamba, Carolina Fanwort, Brazilian Fanwort, or simply Fanwort. Kabamba plants can be green or reddish purple, with green Kabamba plants being the more popular and more readily available. A purple Kabamba, sometimes called a red Kabamba, is somewhat more rare. Purple Kabamba and red Kabamba plants can also be sold as purple fanwort and red fanwort. Under the right tank conditions, a Kabamba plant can make an excellent background plant. A Kabamba plant is a stem plant often sold bunched at the base by a tight rubber band. The purpose of the rubber band is to keep all the stems together for display. The chances are Kabamba plants on display will be planted in gravel, although sometimes they will be floating. Look for Kabamba plants with many green stems about 6 inches or more in length. Kabamba leaves should be green, or reddish purple, bushy and plentiful. There may even be some roots growing from the stems and evidence of new growth. These are all indications that the plant is healthy. And with a little luck, the plant may even have small buds or flowers. Even under the best conditions, some hobbyists still have a difficult time growing kabamba plants. In low light, low tech tanks a kabamba plant can look good for a couple of days, but the plants often start to break apart and die. The lighting requirements for green kabamba plants are beyond standard lighting hoods used by many new hobbyists for their freshwater community tanks. And the lighting requirements for red kabamba and purple kabamba are more stringent than for the green. The solution for the lighting requirements is not as simple as providing more low lighting for longer hours. Kabamba plants require more watts of light per gallon for longer hours. In addition to lighting requirements, a kabamba plant may need liquid fertilizer or root tabs to provide supplements of iron and other necessary minerals. And although not necessary, a kabamba plant would benefit from CO2 supplements. All these issues combined make kabamba care more challenging than some of the other starter plants available like anacharis. Water conditions. Water parameters. Another kabamba care issue has to do with aquarium water. A kabamba plant likes clean tanks with clear gently moving water. If aquarium water moves too quickly, the plant might get jostled around and uprooted. Aquarium pH, 6.87.5. Some hobbyists suggest lower is also acceptable. Water temperature. Tropical fish range, 72 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Lighting, medium to high. Tank size, small to large. Stems, leaves and roots, under the right conditions, kabamba plant stems can grow long with bushy leaves, looking something like a bottle brush. Kabamba plant leaves are soft, delicate and silk-like. As kabamba plant leaves grow they can be excellent food trappers for aquarium shrimp. Kabamba roots are white, fine and string-like. Kabamba roots are very delicate and can break or tear if uprooted. So if the plant needs to be moved, do not tug the planted stem from the substrate. Instead gently scoop up an area of substrate around the planted stem and let the substrate fall back to the bottom. This way, root damage can be kept to a minimum. If left undisturbed, kabamba roots can grow into substantial systems relative to the size of the plant. Planting in substrate. Planting Kabamba plant. After getting the plant home, the first thing to do is gently cut the tight rubber band from the base of the stems. Care must be taken to not crack or snap the stems because they can damage easily. Once the stems are free, it's a good idea to gently swish the bunch in a bucket of aquarium water. This helps the Kabamba plant shed loose leaves. It's better to let the loose leaves fall off the plant before going into the tank. Loose kabamba plant leaves tend to float around and create an unsightly mess on power filter intakes or sponge filters. 
After swishing away the loose leaves, inspect the kabamba plant stems where the rubber bands were. If any of the stems seem damaged, simply gently trim the damaged portion away. It's not uncommon to have to trim about a half inch or so away on a couple of stems in a bunch, but generally not much more than that. If broken or cracked stems are planted, they will rot in the tank, so it's best to give the plant a fresh start. Stems in substrate. Gently plant each stem in an inch or more of nutrient-rich plant substrate, an inch or more apart. It's good to plant stems slightly apart to give them room to grow and sway. Be careful not to pack the substrate around the planted stem too tightly because the stem may break. At the same time, make sure the stem is secure because kabamba plants have a tendency to float around. It's a good idea to plant the longer stems in the back rows and the shorter stems in the front rows. If planted correctly, kabamba plants can create a nice, dense forest, look. After about a week or so, the plant will take root and be better able to hold itself in place. Kabamba plant stems can also be used as an accent plant near midground decorations, almost like a tall shrub planted next to a lamp post in the front yard. Small groups of kabamba plant stems can really look nice to the left or right of a lava rock, for example. With patience and creative thinking, hobbyists get the hang of planting a kabamba plant pretty quickly. As a floating plant, floating kabamba plant, it's also possible to keep kabamba as a floating plant. Floating kabamba is easy. Just drop the stems in the tank and the stems will float near the water surface. Because the stems are closer to the light source, they can grow faster floating as opposed to planted. They can also sprout fine white roots from the stem, and can even flower. But somehow, a floating kabamba plant does not look as nice as a planted kabamba. Trimming kabamba plants and reproduction. For many hobbyists, growing kabamba plants is a challenge. But for the successful hobbyists who have their kabamba plants growing like weeds, the growth rate needs to be managed. Otherwise, the plant can potentially outgrow the tank. Also, growing kabamba plant leaves reaching the surface can block the light for the plant leaves underneath, causing them lower leaves to break apart and die. Trimming kabamba plant stems is not difficult. The key to trimming kabamba is to cut the stems very gently. Be careful to not tug the plant and cause breaking, cracking, excessive shedding or uprooting. And if the trimmings are at least 3 inches long and look to be in good shape, they can be floated in the water or planted in the substrate. And they will grow into new plants on their own. That is all you need to know about this very plant. Do like, share and subscribe.